All right. Hello, everyone. It is 6.36 p.m. on Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. Uh, my name is Allie. I am the secretary of the Dine Commission for Human Rights. Um, our vice chair position is open in our um, chair position, I think, is up. I need to double check that to make that um, official. Um, so either way, uh, we I will be facilitating the meeting tonight. And I do appreciate everyone being here. Um, I think that we should start right now. Oh, actually, I'm not sure about Ken Pacheco. Uh, I think he should be coming on board. But either way, um, I think we're off to a good start. So we can just start in the meantime. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, Ken, you're the 508 number. Is that correct? Yes, I guess. Uh, my cat jumped on my computer and rotated my screen. So <laughs> I'm on the phone. Uh, but to vote on anything, you need a quorum of six. Six. Okay. One, two, three, four. And that's not, five. Yeah, that's not counting me. That's not counting me. All right. So uh, to vote, we need a quorum of six. However, what about to hold a meeting? You can have a, a meeting. You can't make any decisions. Okay. All right. Well, let's get started. Um, we have a pretty good um, turnout from the community, which obviously we appreciate. And I don't think that we should um, waste any more time tonight. So I would like to call the meeting to order tonight. Again, uh, we started the recording and right now it's 6.38 p.m. Um, I do want to make sure that we all announce ourselves for attendance purposes, uh, and this will be strictly for the Dayton Commission of Human Rights members. Um, I'll start with Ali Sunart. Steve Mullen is present. Nicole Campbell present. Roberto Font present. Jill Haru present. Thank you. I know we have Ken Pacheco on as well. So we have Steve. Yes, I'm present also. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. And I yes. also see that um, Vinyan is coming on as well. At this time, we can start to uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. So everyone, please stand and address the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. All right, third meeting on the agenda thus far, uh, was actually a topic that we spoke about last month. Uh, if you recall, last month was April and it was also Autism Awareness Month. And we had a really great discussion uh, with some group members uh, who are on the committee, but then also with some community members as well. So we do have some more community members on the call tonight. Um, we can continue that conversation. So if anyone has anything that they want to contribute, uh, maybe ask some questions on anything they may have missed last week or even just provide some more resources, uh, we can address that now. All right, I'll start. Um, I want to remind the group that um, uh, Police Officer Christopher McGann did come in. He spoke to us and addressed the group and the town um, about the autism awareness patches. Because April is Autism Awareness Month, um, the town of Dayton police officers have uh, continued their tradition of wearing the autism awareness patches. Those patches, those patches, those patches can be purchased at the Dayton police station. Uh, as we know, it's on uh, Somerset Ave. And if you do, if you are interested, you can go anytime between Monday and Friday between 8 and 4 p.m. I do, it is recommended that perhaps you call first in the event that they're not open to the public due to COVID. 
The patches, if they do have them available, are uh, $10 a piece, and all of the proceeds go towards the Doug Flutie Foundation uh, for Autism. In addition to the patches, uh, Christopher McGann also let the group know that um, they have seatbelt covers that can be um, provided to anyone in the community that may need um, a little patch on the seatbelts that do let the first responders know that perhaps someone, if there is an accident, that someone who is wearing that seatbelt cover uh, may resist help, uh, may, you know, be a little bit, um, they may respond differently than perhaps um, someone else. So that is important for them to uh, show that off and make sure that they can be uh, treated appropriately. I'm also realizing that we did not review the minutes from last month. So I think so far I'm doing a good job talking about the um, autism awareness. Uh, however, it wasn't on the agenda to review the minutes from last month. So uh, Ken, what do you think? Do we need to uh, add that to the agenda? Or yes, it, yeah. uh, is it? It's not on the agenda for tonight, right? Unfortunately, not. No. So we should not vote on those minutes. Okay. All right. So I will make a note that we will need to address April and May's minutes uh, during the June meeting. And I will also make sure that it is on the agenda to um, review the minutes. All right, so in addition to what I mentioned um, regarding our autism awareness uh, conversation last month, uh, does anyone else have anything specific um, that they want to contribute? No, nothing to add, Allie, but it was a great conversation. All right, thank you. I do agree. Uh, and I think it was agreed on last time that we were going to uh, continue the conversation. So I think at this time now that, um, you know, we don't have much more to contribute. Um, Steve, do you make a motion to move on from this topic? Yes, I'd like to motion that we move on to the next topic, please. I second. Thank you. All right, let's see, that was number three on the agenda. And we are going to move on quickly to item number four. I do want to mention, however, um, it does say on the public agenda that we are going to um, have an open discussion on Asian hate. Um, I am not in favor of that term, Asian hate. I think that it perhaps could have been uh, articulated a little bit in more of a promotional or educational way. So while we'll still talk about the, um, you know, the fact that May is Asian American in Pacific Islander Heritage Month, um, I think that we can also discuss how um, there might be some discrimination about the um, Asian population in America right now. So I, I do apologize if anyone is offended um, by item number four on the agenda, open discussion on Asian hate. Um, the intentions to discuss this type of discrimination um, were well intended. So right now this is an open discussion. I, have some I also just want to, yep. sorry. Um, I just wanted to make note too, um, May is also Mental Health Awareness Month and Jewish American Heritage Month. Um, so we do recognize both of those, um, but with the way that um, things are going right now in the United States, we really wanted to focus on the Asian Pacific American um, population. So we are not discrediting the other populations, but we only have more time. So we just wanted to make sure that we were able to focus on one more than the other. So I think you make a good point because each month is designated, um, you know, to highlight specific populations, whether they're in America or throughout the world. Um, so each month is designated to something particular. And um, 
Right, and just to add to that, Allie, I believe last month when we met, um, we were aware of the, the various groups that Jill just mentioned, and we decided as a team that, um, because as Jill also mentioned, this is very prevalent right now, that we would have a, a discussion on what is going on and um, you know, what, what we think could be done to help um, help the cause, so to speak. Um, what can we do as good citizens of the country to contribute to uh, this, not having these terrible occurrences go on? So with that being said, does anyone have any, any thoughts? I mean, we see it on the news nightly. We see uh, elderly people getting beat up and, and harmed, physically harmed, just because they happen to be Asian. Is there anything anyone can contribute, um, you know, as a, as a, a member of the team that, um, well, this is Roberto. Um, uh, I know Ali was uncomfortable with, with using the word hate, but let's face it, it, it is an anti-Asian, we're talking about anti-Asian hate crimes. So that's a hate crime is not an unusual, or in my opinion, an offensive term, because that is what it is. You have a, a group that is specifically targeted because of the way they look, and so they're, the, they're that much more identifiable. And so it is a hate crime. And I don't know if you're more comfortable with the term anti-Asian hate crime. And as, 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 as a citizen of North Dighton, uh, if I am aware of either firsthand or secondhand of of an anti-Asian hate crime, because that's what we're talking about right now, then it is incumbent upon me as a responsible citizen to report it if we had a justice department, but we do not, we have a police department. I mean, that, that to me is as close as we're getting, I think, to a justice department. And that has to be reported. And in my opinion, needs to be followed up. Roberto, I do think that you make a good point. And I think I was, um, I guess, misinformed and not confident enough in the um, in the agenda or just the way that I was able to kind of host the meeting tonight. Um, so I do think you're right. If we are going to, if it, it is on the agenda to focus on Asian hate, then that should be the discussion tonight. I was thinking of using this opportunity to promote Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, but I think I was approaching it in the incorrect fashion. Um, so I, I apologize. I was thinking of taking a positive spin, but I do respect your uh, opinion because you're making a good point. We need to talk about this. And, you know, it's not... Um, the Asian American Pacific Asian community to educate us, you know, someone who is not part of that culture, um, you know, it's not their responsibility to educate me or to have like to tell me how to advocate for them. I can do the work too. So I think, you know, Roberto, I appreciate you, you know, bringing that to my attention because again, I was trying to focus more on the concept of the Heritage Month but we can move along and really focus on discrimination, especially right now, because I think Jill mentioned, or someone mentioned it earlier about, you know, the older adults getting, um, you know, beaten or attacked or ambushed, um, you know, because of their race. You know, we know the recent salon was, you know, taken down by, you know, a gunman. Um, you know, was that racially motivated? Perhaps it was. Um, so I, I think that right now with COVID, it's so easy to kind of use, um, you know, someone from the Asian descent as almost that scapegoat as to, you know, why the world is in such a chaotic spot because perhaps it was the, the China virus or, you know, the China disease or whatever it was called. Um, 
you know, and again, that just goes along with the additional parts of the hate crime. I would um, just say, it's Nicole, that in my mind, these conversations are essentially the purpose of this group. Um, not having the terminology correct, not saying things in a way that's received well by everybody should not prevent the conversations from happening. And it's important to speak and to be open to the correction, which Allie, you always are. And um, for people who do know better to, to speak up and say, okay, this is how it should be phrased and for all of us to learn from that. So I think that's part of the learning curve here. And I think it's part of the purpose. So I just wanna kind of affirm that everybody is doing the right thing here and and even if we get it wrong and you know being able to hear it own it apologize and move forward for me is the point and and what I want to be modeling for my kids in the community that we don't know it all and there is a learning curve and to continue the conversations in spite of that so yeah I mean this this commission right here you know, I think that it can make a lot of people uncomfortable, you know, and it made me uncomfortable seeing Asian hate, you know, but Nicole and Roberta, you guys make a really good point. It's okay that I'm uncomfortable because it triggers a conversation and it talks to us a little bit. It, you know, makes me more aware. I don't need to, I shouldn't be embarrassed or scared to kind of ask for additional clarification. And I shouldn't just make the assumption that, you know, someone is going to be offended by it because I don't know. And, you know, who am I to say that someone who is of a completely different culture than I am, um, you know, has a right to feel any way that, you know, that I feel. So, um, I think that we can use this as a really big learning opportunity and just use this as a theme to what our committee is. So thank you, Nicole, for articulating it that way. We know that there is, I mean, let's face it, there is, there has been a huge spike in, on a, uh, with attacks on Asian Americans. It's, 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 it's we're, we're seeing it in real time. And we're seeing in real time the reaction of those who are who have uh, who have been attacked, and they have said, "Yes, I have been targeted because of how I look, and because of how I look, I am receiving blame for something that of which I have no control." And so, yeah, it's it is, you know, as 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 a gay Latino, I know when I am targeted. And when is the hate crime? It's because someone cannot tolerate, goes beyond not even, goes beyond not even being, being able to tolerate someone. It is a visceral gut reaction. And when that happens, uh, people are brutally attacked and assaulted. And unfortunately, I can, unfortunately it's happening to Asian Americans who are women, they are targeted and the elderly. And uh, so I, I just want to emphasize again, yes, these are hate crimes. And it's, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I, I also think this is a good opportunity. This is a perfect example of, of how we have to, as a commission, make um, or hopefully help people realize that this is going on. And even though I'm, uh, I'm assuming in, in Dighton Mass, we have a, a very minor population of, of Asian Americans, but it's really important to have these conversations because the parents of children in school can influence this, right? Um, you know, conversations at the dinner table, they can go one way or the other. It's, you know, you can be pro or con on, on any, any type of hate. And, you know, if a parent teaches a child, you know, what is right and what is morally wrong, 
you know, that's, that's where it starts. It starts at home. And then of course it, it goes to the schools and, and I can only assume, um, you know, good schools discuss these types of things, you know, that um, it, it's important to have these discussions and, and help children also understand what hate crimes are so that's just just some thoughts, kind of brainstorming here, but open conversation, and you know, um, it, it's a good beginning. So, uh, may I also add something to the conversation? Uh, I, I I think it is important important to also uh, remember that the this country actually has a history of. Uh, committing hate crimes against Asian. So one of, uh, uh, one of the, in fact, I, I believe the shortcoming of, I wouldn't say one of the shortcomings, one of the problems that actually uh, came up with the Black Lives Matter was that it obscured uh, the fight of other minority also, in a sense. And we tend not to, to view Asian as, as a group that have been systematically actually been oppressed. We can talk about the uh, Chinese Exclusion Act. Perhaps uh, some of you uh, are aware of that. Uh, they, they were, uh, were also the San Francisco bubonic plague, which was also a, a serious uh, problem. There was World War II, Japanese internment camp. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the civil rights movement actually involved uh, some, some laws that uh, lifted the exclusion of people just, of the immigration of a, a group of people just solely based on their racial background. There is uh, the murder, murder of Vincent Chin in the LA riot. So all of these things are in fact part of the American fabric. So I'll, some people were surprised to see these aspects of racism being spilled all over the, the news, the news as if it was something that was new, but it actually is part of uh, history here. And so maybe part of what we want to do is educate ourselves, sort of understand the history of this nation, understand the violence that has been part of the way uh, part of this nation was constructed and use that as a way to guide ourselves toward a better future. Well, so that was, that was, I'm glad you brought that up. The, the, the internment camps and all that you mentioned. Um, and, and, and yeah, we need to remember and self-educate and just look at and remember also how um, Asian Americans have been portrayed in the media throughout the years and how Asian Americans were not portrayed where we used American actors to portray themselves as Asian Americans. I think of Marlon Brando. I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, uh, and, so, and so, and then when we, and, and it just seems that if the Asian American or any minority group does not fit the stereotypical image of white America, then they're not, they're not they're equally recognized uh, as, as opposed to recognize them, recognize them for the beauty of the culture they represent. Because within their own, within their own culture, there is beauty within, within the different nations of Africa, there is, there is beauty and there is, shouldn't have to be a conformity to the idea, to the, what was always perceived as beautiful. And that is this stereotypical white 
model you would see on Vogue magazine. And so these, so you have all these cultures trying to fit that image. Yes. But thank you, Vinyan. That was very, I, that was very important. I think you brought up some very significant pieces of American history. Um, you know, the Transcontinental Railroad, you know, the, it was basically built off of Chinese slaves. Um, and that really formed America in the Industrial Revolution and, you know, really just helped America grow as a total. So I think that that's important. Also today alone, you know, one of the top stories is that um, apparently there was um, a stranger attacking an Asian woman with a hammer in New York City. And uh, the New York Police Department has um, confirmed that they are investigating two more assaults on Asian Americans. So, you know, it's going on. And I think it's so easy for us um, as perhaps, you know, a less diverse town to not think that it's happening. Um, but, you know, we can't let the bystander effect happen. And we need to have these types of conversations where we can call each other out and, you know, educate each other. I think it's also important that we, um, you know, highlight some Asian American stores or restaurants uh, and just kind of promote, you know, the small businesses that are, you know, owned by own just by people close to us. Um, it's important to, uh, you know, shop small on a regular basis, but it's okay to, um, you know, promote, especially during this month, um, the, the shopping at locally owned Asian markets, stores, restaurants, anything like that. And that also goes along with, uh, I think Jill, you mentioned the Jewish history month as well, or Jewish heritage. Uh, so we can do the same thing for that. Vinny, were you going to say something? I'm sorry. Yeah, so there, there was, you know, while we uh, we are here, there's one other aspect that I wanted to, to mention, which in fact, I've also made this mistake before and didn't realize that it was offensive to Asian uh, Americans. It's sort of this idea that they're the um, model minority, right? So that's that's deeply offensive to them because they view it as being, so essentially we sort of robbing people from their individuality and we are painting everyone, you know, group an entire group of people with a broad brush. Um, the idea, for example, that, you know, uh, they are smart or using that as a comp, that may appear to be a compliment when people talk about Asian being, for example, quote unquote, and I always cringe when the uh, this uh, uh, the, the 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 presidential candidate, uh, his name is uh, was Asian. Uh, just this past election, you will yeah. use it also as a line to uh, to to get laughs. Uh, I, I always thought that that was a bit inappropriate in in, in my view. Uh, and I've talked to a few people who on the side have told me that Asian people usually find that to be quite offensive. Talking about uh, maybe Andrew Yang? Andrew Yang. Andrew. Yeah, the Asian math guy. Yep. Yeah, he, yeah I, I, I was surprised the extent to which he actually overused that line. I just have a um, process question. Are the people from the community who are listening in allowed to weigh in as long as it's not regarding a voting issue? Well, we do have a quorum, uh, but normally uh, the chair would decide whether or not uh, someone can ask a question. Uh, for example, the, the board of selectmen, if there's a hearing on a license, the public has access. If there's a public hearing, the public has access. But other items, they don't normally have input until the, which I see on the agenda, public input. Uh, but this is a meeting that we want the public's input, I guess. And I'd be interested to hear what comments from uh, other people. I just want to, uh, while we're talking on this uh, conversation, I did get a phone call today from 
a uh, political party uh, looking for money. And what they were saying was, are you with this particular political party in fighting the fake hate bills before Congress? So there is this particular, you can take a wild guess as to what political party it is, but this, they think there's a bill before Congress on Asian hate. And there were people that are thinking that that is a fake bill, that there's no such thing as Asian hate. Wow. And that kind of tells you something about the direction of some of the people in this country. So I was a little upset and I may have used some profanity in my conversation with them, but uh, it is real out there. It's, we have the history, long, terrible history, the way we treated uh, Chinese and Asian uh, people, but it's going on today also. And we see it in the news too often. Yeah. You know, to follow up on that, Ken, I mean, our community is kind of a bubble, right? We're, we're a small town, we don't see a lot of that, but it's absolutely true that th this does exist and we're only seeing snippets of it on the news. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, it, it, it's a real thing and, and hate is a real thing. And um, there are people in America that are trying to minimize the truth. And when it comes to hate for anyone, hate, abuse, murder, I mean, making someone feel bad because of who they are, you know, this does exist. And some of that it does exist on a, in a small town level. This particular topic where it's, we're speaking about probably doesn't impact uh, you know, Dighton as a whole because of the very small uh, uh, minority. But I, I bet if we were to have um, any Asian American citizens, local citizens on this call, they could sure give some good examples of things that have happened to them as well. Yeah, I think moving forward, um, I think that we can promote our agenda uh, more prematurely uh, so that, you know, people who are in the community that do, may want to speak up about this, you know, this may be the only month that they want to attend one of our meetings so that they can participate in this conversation. Um, so, you know, it would be a good opportunity, you know, when we talk about, say, June, uh, July, whatever the next months are, uh, we can kind of promote that. Jen, I see that you have your hand raised. Um, do you want to comment at all? I think that it's appropriate during this open discussion for you to also talk. Sure. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I guess, ask the question a little bit um, of whether the commission has considered um, laying ground rules and going over expectations before starting a conversation like this. Um, I think, uh, you know, I I tend to defer to what's called uh, brave spaces, but some people have talked about safe spaces. I prefer brave spaces over safe spaces because as you were referring to earlier, some conversations may make you uncomfortable, but having those ground rules about what is respectful, what is expected from folks, how to comment, how to jump in on the conversation, um, those kind of things can be very helpful. Um, I, in a group that I belong to, we have another system of if you want feedback in the gr open group, um, based on like something that you said, you can put a plus sign. If you don't feel like you're comfortable with that today, you can put a uh, minus sign in the chat. So there's lots of different tools and techniques out there for facilitation of these types of conversations. And I was just wondering if the commission had talked about any of that or sort of thought about setting the stage before starting conversations like this? So we did talk about it at our, um, the beginning meetings. Um, so we did talk about how this is, you know, a, an open space that, you know, we're, we're going to make mistakes when we want to be corrected on it, as long as we're a, a corrected in an appropriate, um, you know, respectful manner. Um, but you're right, we probably should be addressing it at each of the meetings before we start a conversation such as this. Um, so, yeah, I think it just maybe sets the mood and especially I, I apologize. I wasn't at that meeting. So I. Jen, you just went blank. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Jen. Jen. I might be frozen. <laughs> no, I don't know if you want to try it again. 
Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay. I, I got the message across my screen saying internet connection was unstable. Oh. Um, no, I was just saying, like, I don't know if, uh, if you have the blurb and you want to pop it into the chat at the beginning of every meeting or something. So folks know it. I apologize. I wasn't at that first meeting, but I think that's a really great way to kind of set the stage. Yeah, I, I really it's agree. Also part of our, oh, sorry. Um, it's no. also part of our, our goals and our mission statement is that, you know, that's part of of what we stand for is just that open communication. So, mm -hmm. but agree, we should do it. Yeah, as yeah. far as facilitating a meeting, I think it's a that's a valid point. Yeah, I can look into some strategies for like I do like that plus sign minus sign piece. Um, you know, today I am I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. I would appreciate that feedback because it will help me you know down the road if we're talking about something else it may be more sensitive to me and you know i would have preferred if nicole maybe didn't say something or roberto didn't say anything but you know i also know that in this forum i am in you know for a cliche term but you know i'm in a safe place where i can learn and i'm not going to feel judged um you know some people might not like what i have to say whether it's against a certain culture or if it's, you know, just maybe thinking that I'm ignorant or whatever the case is, you know, this is why I'm here to learn. And I think this is why we're all passionate about this group so that we can have this type of discussion because again, it just promotes more acceptance and awareness, um, which as Jill mentioned, it is part of our, um, part of our goals. In one of the first, first, first meetings, um, you know, we were actually at the old town hall. This was even before COVID. If you can remember back that far, um, you know, we did, we all talked about it. We agreed, like, what are we all doing here? What are we going to do? And I think when, you know, we all met, we said, this is what we want this group to be more of that educational opportunity, because, you know, we can do a thousand things in going out to the, um, you know, going out to the, the, the town and doing some rallies or anything like that. That would be really good community outreach and community education. But I think our primary focus was to have those tough conversations like Nicole mentioned. So thank you, Jen. I, um, I'm going to put those, put your idea down in the minutes because um, that's huge. Like Jill said, I think that we were all under the impression that that was okay, but we need to kind of throw out that disclaimer. So thank you, that's a good idea. All right, does anyone else have anything more that um, you think maybe that we missed or something more that we wanna kind of address about the, um, the agent hate open discussion? I do have a question on it. Um, and and I, I know from our viewpoint, it may be difficult, but talking about education, right? Talking about, um, you know, our discussions. Is there any way that we can tie into um, school discussions, you know, to see what is being done in schools and uh, on this topic and many, uh, many other topics when it comes to um, human rights? Is, is I think a um, way to tap into that? So one of the first meetings that Ali is referring to, we had talked about trying to get somebody from um, the, the school board to accommodate, uh, accompany us on our meetings so that they can address some of those things. I don't know um, where that ended up kind of falling, but I think it's definitely something that we need to, to get back on and try to have somebody. I know I can speak for myself. I went to a very small school and you know, a very small town in Connecticut. And I did not learn about most of these things until I think maybe junior or senior year of high school. And that like, it affects me now because I'm like, how did I grow up for so long with not knowing how ignorant I was to the fact that all of this stuff was occurring around me. Um, and I, I, I agree, I think we need to have young like get it in them young so that we can learn as we're growing because that's when we're building our our brain to you know care about other people and how we treat people 
we can't undo things that have already happened, but we can change them if we know. Yeah, very good. So I think we definitely need to get, I think we need to either have like a teacher or somebody from like the school board to be on these. I think it would be super beneficial. How can We you also had talked about know? having a police officer too, didn't we? I don't know if that was just last month because of autism awareness, I'm not sure. But I wanted to bring that up during our open uh, discussion just in general, which is actually I think the next thing on our agenda because I feel like we need to kind of revamp this group a little bit. These conversations are really important to have, but you know, what's stopping us and this is just our first year, but you know, I think that we can, you know, start planning, you know, maybe getting a bunch of a bunch of books online, you know, that maybe we can get donated to the local library so that, you know, this month, you know, the librarian can put those on you know, focus those books for the for the month of May or whatever the case is. You know, I think that we can start adding these things in. We have to start the conversation somewhere, but you know, this time next year, Steve, I'm really hoping that we can actually have some action steps in some of those, you know, true educational pieces of outreach that are already planned for May. So I, I feel like we need to kind of work on our agenda a little bit more so that we can you know, I think that these meetings are great for conversation, but we got to start moving forward and kind of getting some things and putting our thoughts and our incredible, um, you know, our just our energy in motion. No, that's that's valid. I have so this question probably more for Ken. How would we get some of these folks to be part of, um, not necessarily a member? but to be able to, to join these calls and, and participate on a, on a regular basis. As, as we mentioned, you know, someone from the school department or from the school, a, someone from the police department. I mean, the, those are two really huge uh, components of, of uh, you know, helping this and, and helping the cause um, advance of human rights. Yeah, I can uh, contact the school committee and see if somebody from the school committee would be willing to uh, participate in at least some of the meetings right. uh, that we have, as well as maybe I'll talk to the police chief and see if he has someone in particular, uh, but maybe the school resource officer might be a good person to um, have uh, come to our meetings or attend some of our meetings. I don't expect them, unfortunately, I mean, they're, they're busy with other stuff. Uh, you know, they're, they're parents, they got kids and they, you know, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so they may not be able to attend all the meetings, but uh, when we're aware of when they're going to attend, maybe we should gear it around them. If, say, for example, school committee members going to come, we have issues on the agenda that is geared for something that that person may have some interest in and presenting back to the school committee as well as uh, the school resource officer or, or a police officer that will bring something back to the police department. No, so, I like that. I, if, you I, want, I, if you want, I, I can do that if that's what the committee wants. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know if you would take that as an action alley, but it definitely should be in, in the minutes. Um, I think that's really being proactive. And good point, Ken, when you stated, you know, we, of course we may need to plan ahead uh, on attendance, but if there's a, a specific topic that we can pull someone in ahead of time, maybe we can plan that way as well. Because, you know, obviously, I think most of us feel that they're all important topics, right? Every month or every discussion we have is, is important, but there's, you know, some that they, whether it be police or the school department could have more impact, um, you know, on, on students as well. I think we could also, you know, if we know our agenda ahead of time, they could even rotate through their committee to say, you know, you're really, um, like, this is something that's important to you. Do you want to attend this meeting? This is something that's really important to you. Do you want to attend this meeting? So that they are able to kind of pick and choose. And we're not, we don't always have the same person. So maybe we have a different set of eyes and, yeah. um, and somebody that's passionate about that one specific topic so that we can really kind of dig deep. Because I think, I, I think it's super important. I yeah, I think even Ken, if you don't mind just kind of opening up that conversation in the beginning, and then they can say, oh, you know what, my, you know, um, 
don't know, you know, it's, oh, Black History Month is coming up in, you know, February. Um, you know, I, I really want to kind of talk about something. This is, you know, what I'm passionate about. This is what I know the most. And Ken, can you book me for February? Yeah, I think, I think that, that is a good idea. Okay. I will. Yeah, thank you. But I will add that to the minutes, Steve, thanks. All right, do you want, since we've uh, kind of just opened this up a little bit more to more of a, um, you know, open conversation for some public input, um, do you think we're ready to move on from this topic of um, Asian hate and maybe just open it up for public input? Yeah, so I, I vote that we move on from the Asian hate topic and move on to the next item on the agenda. Thank you. A second? second. All right, thank you. Um, Kevin Smith Jr., I do see that you have your hand raised. I think that that means that you want to um, contribute during the public input. So why don't you take the floor? Thank you. I do. Good evening, everyone. Actually, I'm glad you guys just brought up that last subject. That's why I'm here, is to try to collaborate from a different um, commission. Um, I did attend um, your last your meeting from last month for autism awareness. Um, I stayed on for the majority of it, but I had to bounce off right before I got to the public input section. Um, but I did reach out to Sean, and I know he's not with you all tonight, but um, about collaborating a little bit with your group um, through the Parks and Rec Commission um, to bring some more opportunities um, for children of different abilities um, to our parks. And then also just on a general um, you know, human rights subject is we have issues like bullying and things like that that happen all the time in public spaces. So I I'm really wanna be proactive in collaborating with groups like yours. Um, also, like the, I'm also on the Commission on Disability with Jen and Nicole Mello. So like we're, we're actively always looking at things. So I'm like, I'm, I always, if you guys ever have any input that you can provide me, like I'm always willing to take it. Um, if a subject comes up that you might think pertains to something Parks and Rec related, please invite me to a meeting. I'd be more than happy to listen in or provide input if I can. So I just wanted to make that um, known to all of you that I am available to, you know, to talk or discuss any topic at any time with your group. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, can you tell me one more time? I'm also trying to take notes. Um, what are the... Um committees that you're on again you said the parks and rec right yep so i'm the chairman of parks and rec um i'm on the commission on disability open space committee <laughs> um and actually one other thing that might involve you guys or if you guys would if anyone on in this group would like to join us um myself and the ada coordinator jonathan gale have a inclusive playground task uh subcommittee task force um, so it would might be a good idea to involve somebody from this group also on that if anyone's interested. It's a kind of a low ask subcommittee. We don't have a ton of meetings. We're just trying to um, come up with positive plans moving forward for some playground de designs and, and things like that. Um, so it would be great if anyone would like to volunteer to be involved with that also. Yeah, that's huge. I remember in college, uh, few years ago, I minored in um, urban studies and I concentrated in gerontology. And I think that it's so important. I don't think people realize like the importance of like the engineering of a park. It's not just throwing a slide, throwing something here. You know, I think being on the ADA committee, like, you know, all right, we need certain benches, certain, you know, accessible slides or, or swings or anything like that. But also like having enough seating for older adults to be able to watch you know, the public and to just engage and not need to feel like they, they can't stay because there's not enough shade or perhaps there's not a bathroom. Right. Um, so Vinyan, I know that you work at Bridgewater State College. So I don't know if, um, I, I went to Worcester State and I, they probably still have that as a uh, department urban studies. Um, but do you know of anything at Bridgewater Vinyan that is related to urban studies or, you know, town development or anything like that? Probably, I mean, this is a, a big campus and I'm in the College of Science and Mathematics, but okay, so can I follow up uh, with, I, I wouldn't want to, right now, I don't have an answer right now, but I can follow up. Uh, could you put um, 
your answer, your question in the chat or or maybe are you taking notes for that? Yes, I am. Okay. And I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious because I know that they are a local college. I think Bristol Community College is also local, um, you know, and I, I don't know if any of the students that attend any of the colleges live in Dighton or surrounding towns. Um, you know, I just thought it was interesting that, you know, there was something that I minored in, which really a minor doesn't really even do much, but it made me aware of little opportunities like this. And uh, now I'm in debt for my 15 minutes of fame telling you that I know a little bit about creating a park uh, for the older adult population. Um, but yeah, Vinyan, I will put it on there. I, I put you on the spot. I'm yes, sorry. Okay, I will, no, no, I, will, I will follow up on that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and just one other thing that I want to add, because I always any there's a few people on on the group on the call right now who know me like I push inclusion like big time, but almost to a fault that I push inclusion from a disability perspective. And but then that's why I, it would be nice to have somebody from your committee join us to help bring in some more of those aspects. And it's not that I don't I do care like and I want to hear it. It's just it, I'm not educated on the subject or I haven't in, been involved in a group like this so I don't have that much input but obviously we want to inclusion should mean everybody um, regardless of age ability so on and so forth so yeah it should and, and you brought up some really good points and and thank you for for mentioning all of that but um you know you mentioned something uh, on the committees that that you're on uh, one word that's stuck in my head is bullying, right? And that's, um, that's a, a key topic that this commission has been discussing and uh, will be discussing. And we, we just did perfect for the month of May, right? Asian hate, can't get, you know, that, that's a lot of bullying going on there. And next month is Pride Month. If, if any group has been bullied, you know, it, it's the gay community throughout the years and it, it, it still happens. So if there's a way that we could tie in with you, you know, playgrounds, I mean, you know, I can remember being a kid and being bullied on playgrounds when the teacher turned their head or whatever. So yeah, and I know it still goes on today. So if there's any way we can work in tandem to think of things that could help, let's do it. And we would love to partner with some progressive uh, members of the community. So, yeah, and I think the playground is such an, a great opportunity to provide educational information without kids even realizing it. Absolutely. Because they're, they're so engaged and they're so playing that they might see some sort of signage or a game that makes you, uh, you know, kind of unconsciously include everybody and then you you know you, you created a learning experience without really pushing it which i think is the best way for kids to absorb things i agree i agree and uh, another reason ken why uh, it would be great to have someone from the school committee tie in help tie in all of this together um you know the school playgrounds as well so this is good i, I like what i'm hearing I, um, this summer, when we were able to get outside a little bit, I went to um, a park, I think it was out in maybe a Kushnet, and they had a story. So they had where the wild things grow, I think, I don't even remember the name of the story. Um, and you, as you walked, you read the story. Um, and initially, you know, we had like our bikes out there. And it was, up rocks and you had to climb stairs and there was such a huge community that wouldn't be able to do that and I just think like if we had something around here that everybody could go to and everybody could you know take at their own pace and and it was available I think that would be really amazing there was a ton of cars there um so there were people that were scattered throughout I just think about you know or if I had a, a child in a stroller you know we wouldn't be able to do that um, there's the hiking trails in, in Swansea. Unless, unless you can be physically at, like walking, you can't, you can't do any of those things. So let us know if there's anything that you need. Um, and, and I'll be there because I think it's so important. So. And what do you guys do during the summer? Do you, um, 
at their like band concerts during the summer. Um, this will be probably one of my first summers here in Dayton where we can actually do something. Last summer was a wash in my first summer here. You literally just took the words out of my mouth because I was like, oh, I have to add one more thing. It, it's not approved yet, but we're in discussions. I'm trying to set up a concert in the park on July 10th. Um, I'm going through the motions to be able to present it to my commission and get it approved. One of my like key proponents to this is to not just have a concert in the park. I, I'm going to send out, you'll, people will see invitations. I'm going to send out invitations to the police department, the fire department, the Lions Club, WAGS, every committee and commission in this town because I want, and obviously we're going to have to adhere, we're going to have to really be careful with if we have any social distancing guidelines in place and things like that, how many people we can group together. But I would love for everybody who's on a committee or a commission or a part of a nonprofit in town or so on and so forth, come down and set up a table like and have like just a community outreach day, but also have an attraction. So it's not like, oh, walk around the track, talk to a couple of people at tables. Like, so we'll have something there to kind of draw everybody in. But while you know the kids are playing, listening to this concert, the parents can go visit various groups and gather information. So you know, I'm hoping to kind of get that by the very, very beginning of June sent out to everybody um, to, you know, get people, you know, quote unquote, signed up to come down and, and participate. Yeah. No, that's, I, I, I like the thought of that. And actually a few months ago, when we were talking about community events, we were trying to think of how we could as a commission uh, let, let the townspeople know that we exist because a lot of folks don't know. And to kind of um, go off on a little tangent, it, it may be a good time to ask, um, Ken, what is, what's the status with budget? Because there's so much more we could do if we had a, a, a budget for a table and handouts or, you know, being creative with, with things like that. Have, have we made any progress on that? Yes, well, the Board of Selectmen uh, has met with the FinCom and we got our last meeting, we hope, uh, Thursday night. They'll make their recommendations. It'll come back to the uh, Board of Selectmen on May 12th. We'll make our recommendations. And then at the annual town meeting on June 7th at uh, Dighton We Hope uh, Auditorium, the townspeople will vote on the different budgets. Oh. So, and it, if it is approved on June 7th, it doesn't become effective until July 1st, the budget. Okay. Yeah, so with, with that being said, Kevin, it would be um, as much as, I, I'm just trying to think ahead with the, the timelines Ken just mentioned, um, trying to, we have to get really creative <laughs> without any funds, um, you know, or if we do get them, we have about a week to do something with them. Um, we are in a similar situation on the Commission on Disability, and that's one of our main focuses in our meetings has been talking about outreach because nobody knows we're there unless they've dealt with us directly for something. Right. Um, and I wouldn't be so concerned with having, you know, some bit like a flashy flyer. Sometimes all it takes is a conversation. So like, I, so that's how I learned about your, this committee was I was talking to somebody that said, oh, the Human Rights Committee. And the, the, the kind of ace up our sleeve as far as advertising is really Facebook. I mean, that's the reality of it. Social media is huge. But the, sometimes, you know, you can't have an effective conversation with somebody unless it's in person. So even if you kept it as simple as get some poster boards and make, make a couple of signs that say, we're the Human Rights Committee. I think that's it could be that simple because we'll probably be in this in a similar boat with the Commission on Disability, if, if, if I'm being honest with you. And, you know, it doesn't have to be extravagant. You just got to, you know, just your presence is the most important part, in my opinion. All right. Well, game on, Kevin. Let's see. May the best committee win and get the, <laughs> the most promotion throughout the state, uh, throughout the town. Maybe, um, yeah, we can have like a poster board contest who designs yeah. their best poster board. I <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I think put it out there to the schools and have the kids design it and that yeah. you get all of it done. I'm telling you. Yeah, that's why we really need somebody from from the schools to be part of this. 
Yeah, I agree. But you know what? We do have a good representation of moms uh, who do, or dads who have, you know, kids in the community uh, that do attend our school. So, you know, we can take advantage of that. But, you know, Steve, like you said, uh, having someone who's got the in in the town school department, you know, will we'll just make things easier. But we shouldn't let that be a barrier to stop us because, you know, as everyone here on this, you know, call knows, you know, we can't be stopped by barriers and we're not going to let something, you know, that we're not educated in, you know, kind of stop us from really trying to make a difference. So yeah. I like the idea. I know I grew up in a very, very small white town. You couldn't tell by my previous comments, but I, I do appreciate that you guys are very generous with me. Um, but every, uh, I think it was like every Thursday night, we had band concerts down at the park. Um, and it was awesome. It was fun being like a middle schooler going, you know, talking to like my friends, you know, a school vacation during the summer. So it was fun. So, you know, I love the idea of July 10th, but even if we could maybe even do something just with our committee, you know, connecting with Ken's committee, uh, Kevin's committee, um, you know, even just if we can do a movie night, you know, just rent one of those really big, you know, blow up screens, you know, and just have something that's maybe a little bit family friendly or, you know, take it on another spin. And, you know, there's so many really nice documentaries uh, that, uh, you know, really focus on, you know, just one topic or, you know, one person, um, you know, there's an opportunity, which is not really promoting Dighton, but uh, in Newport, they have uh, like Newport film, not the Newport film festival, not that, but every Thursday night in Newport, they will have one of those really huge, you know, projection things. And you literally go and you sit um, outside in front of one of the Newport mansions. You get your little chair, you get your blanket, and you just, you watch a documentary that you've never known anything about. Um, and they are, they're smaller independent films. Um, you know, and it's so much fun because literally you're sitting in a Newport mansion front lawn, you know, watching this really cool movie and we can do that here. So number one, I, I encourage everyone to check out the Newport film. Um, but also, you know, let us know if you have any ideas on number one, how we can get one of those big boards. Um, but then also number two, if there are any ideas that you guys have for movies or books or anything like that. Um, kind of spinning off of that, a cheap or affordable way to bring the community in could be a book club with a focus on books that, you know, and obviously it would, the selection of books would have to be done carefully, but I think highlighting specific topics, issues, inclusion stuff that people want to know more about and, and learn the language and be able to have a conversation that's a little bit more articulate about it might be something that people are interested in and a kind of less, we're the committee and we're here to tell you type of way. Um, so I think that could probably be beneficial too and wouldn't take a lot out of our budget if people were willing to purchase their own books. You can get books right from the library. Um, you can do audiobooks, or you can um, get books for like your Kindle or something like that for free if you have a library card. Um, so I am in for that. I read nonstop and I love it. So, Nicole, you can front it, but I'll be there to support you in the background. Jen just threw a, a chat up. Um... And there was one that just kind of resonated with me, although, the, you know, very good ones, but, you know, kids doing poetry, you know, little poetry readings, little poetry co uh, competition on a, on a subject, things like that. I mean, God, how, how wonderful would that be? You all right, Jill? <laughs> All right, so I think right now what I'm going to do is um, I th we have a, a few more things in our agenda, and I think number seven we have to, you know, talk about a vice chairperson. But I'm going to take it upon myself and start creating the agenda for next month. 
Uh, it is June, so we'll have to talk about some June things, but I am going to, you know, maybe assign some homework for this month so that this group can come back. You know, Nicole, you don't have to throw out this, you know, this whole book club, you know, but if you have any ideas, Jill, you say you read a lot, you know, just write down three or four books that we can talk about. And I think Jill, you three or four right now. All right. Slow it. down. We slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it all at once. That's your homework. So you're ahead of the class. Uh, but Jen mentioned that we can connect with Jocelyn um, at the library. So, you know, Jill, maybe I'll voluntold you and you can be the, um, kind of liaison to connect with the library. So we can, can kind of get that going. Um, so I, I do want to put these things on our agenda for next, next meeting, because, uh, these discussions are great, but we, we're here, you know, we're almost coming up to a year. I think October will be a whole year that this committee is going on and it's going to come quick the same way that July 10th will come quick and July 1st. So we'll get some more information about our budget in this really cool, um, you know, park night and day concert thing. So is there anything else um, that we want to wrap up on for the public input? If you don't mind, uh, Allie, I'll say a few yep. things. Um, other than the fact that I think you're still doing a great job. Um, Thank you, sir. But the topic tonight was a very good topic. And I did a little homework myself on it. And, you know, I, I do enjoy learning things and you know, looking at things a little differently. Um, but there was a study done by uh, Cal State University, San Bernardino, and they examined police data from 16 jurisdictions across the country, finding a 164% increase in reports of anti-Asian hate crimes in the first quarter of 2021, compared with the same period last year. And New York saw the greatest increases of 223%, followed by 140% of San Francisco, 80% in Los Angeles, and 60% in Boston. Some of the cities, including Phoenix, Seattle, and Miami, reported no change year over year. Um, there's a national story, and there's also local and regional stories, but it's fairly consistent. And, uh, you know, it kind of, I won't read you the whole thing, but it went on to say, you know, that the bigger cities are finding more hate crimes than, you know, the smaller cities, such as, you know, like the town of Dighton. Uh, so one of the members here said that we had very few Asian residents. And um, I do have a couple of Asian friends that live in the town of Dighton. And I sent one of them the agenda yesterday and they were offended that the word Asian didn't have a capital letter. So it's easy to um, offend people, even with words. So um, that's basically all I have to say tonight. But I really do uh, enjoy tuning into your meetings and you guys are doing a great job. And I appreciate everyone here volunteering. Thank you. Yeah. So what, could you do you have that link for the article? It would be really uh, nice if you could include it in the chat. I would love to read it. Yeah, I don't know if I know how to put it in the chat, but I just Googled it. Just, <laughs> okay. All I had to do was Google Asian hate crime, and it came right up. Okay, and it was from um, UC San Bernardino? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I do have a question for um, Mr. Woods. By any chance, in that article, does it say why they believe there is such an increase in Asian hate? Like what's, what, what's the precipice? What they what, did uh, mention, they did mention the China virus. You know, um, mm -hmm. that's what some people refer to it as. Well, I think that's one of the problems. Personally, when you call right. it, <laughs> I'd be a little defensive too, right? Well, I know my grandfather was a Korean War veteran, and he refused to eat Chinese food. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, he saw some action. I guess that was enough to turn them off, but uh, we all ate it. So that's the that's the major reason there uh, because of the COVID virus. Yeah, that that's basically what it said, you know. Uh, and and if it's in the news, then it's it's promoted more. They did say that too somewhere in there. Mm. 
Okay. Says so some of the increases that we've seen is going to be due to what we call reporting effect. Certainly, but not at this level, he said. You have like a jigsaw puzzle pieces you put together, but it points to a horrifying surge of violence against our Asian community, which is being sustained. So some experts have noted that these attacks are probably underreported due to barriers such as language and technologies. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that one. And willingness for officials to call it a hate crime because it can't be reported statistically as a hate crime if, if police and justice systems are not labeling it as such. And I think that has been a problem historically in all oppressed and marginalized people that their claims are not taken seriously and they're not labeled appropriately. And so if they're the stats don't back it up, then there's not a problem. So I just wanted to mention that as well, that just the fact that we're seeing these increases means that it's being called what it is. And that's a step forward, I think. And uh, it's a good thing as much as it's a bad thing that we're seeing such huge percentages because it's being labeled appropriately. Yeah, it's the truth. Oh, Dignan just found the study Robert was referring to and he just put it in the chat. Yes, if you look uh, sort of halfway to the, well, not even halfway, close to the top of the page, you can see the charts, the big charts. There's a big chart which actually is showing all of the st statistics that uh, Robert was mentioning. Uh -huh. So, Ali, what is next on the agenda do we close this one out or do we i know there's a few other folks that um haven't mentioned anything i don't know if they're just uh, observing or if they want to contribute otherwise maybe move on to the next item and talk about uh what will be what june will be coming up with all right um do we need to motion to, um, oh, actually, before we move on, Steve, I think you brought up something, a good point. June, um, during this public input right here, um, does anyone have any ideas on what we can talk about in June? Um, I know that June is Gay Pride Month, um, and it can... It's also used to support the LGBTQ community. Um, does anyone have any other ideas on what we can, you know, I think that that's something that we can talk about. We can have a, an open discussion on that next month. Um, is there anything else in the month of June that we should talk about? No, I think that's, um, since we've been talking about uh, the gay pride flag um, and, and various topics surrounding that over the last few months regarding letters, et cetera. Um, I think it's, it's a, a good time to acknowledge, acknowledge it. Sure. Jen, I see that you have your hand up. Give, give me maybe one second um, while we're talking about this. Ken, um, what is the status with the flag? Are we flying it? I know that we presented our, um, you know, what the group, what the group voted on, the group majority voted on. But what are the next steps? Where do, what's next with that? Well, it was not voted on. I gave uh, the board of selectmen the recommendations of this commission. It wasn't to uh, to act on it. We could discuss it, but we decided not to, to vote on it. And I don't believe it's going to come up again. Uh, quite frankly, frankly, I would encourage uh, everyone, as Chris and I will be doing here, uh, flying a, our own gay pride flag for the month of June. I would encourage the public, the residents of town to do that. Uh, but as I understand it, it's not going to come before the, the Board of Selectmen to vote on uh, flying the gay pride flag at Town Hall. How does that get decided on, Ken? Well, I am the chair of the uh, Board of Selectmen now. I, uh, with the town administrator, 
uh, this come up with the agenda. Anybody, we have a, our meetings are hybrid, so they're in person, usually for the select board and other people, but it's also a Zoom meeting. Anybody doing public input can talk about it. Anybody can ask that, that it be put on the agenda, but I can, uh, I suspect, uh, quite frankly, it would not pass even if it came to a vote. I understand everybody's concern uh, about this, obviously, and I caught some heat for taking my uh, position, but I stand with my position. I don't think that this is worth, uh, although it's a very serious matter, I have gay family members that I love, uh, but it just divided the town up so much. I personally don't feel it should be uh, voted on uh, by the board of selectmen. So we have Kevin um, here. Is there a way that we can um, talk about possibly getting a human rights flag in one of the main parks within Dighton, Kevin? Is he still here? Oh. Can you just repeat that? Sorry, question? I'm putting you on the spot. I was wondering if there's any way um, that we could possibly get a human rights flag, uh, flagpole maybe in one of the main parks within Dighton so that we can, you know, celebrate gay pride with the flag in that park and then maybe cycle through for every month if we can afford the flags for those. I, I think we can have a conversation about it. Um, my feeling is I feel like it's going to stir up the same problem as Ken noted with town hall. Um, any piece of town property is still town property. So that's always a difficult conversation. And just to give you, you know, outside, and this is my personal opinion only, my feeling on this, because, and I think the big problem is we, we want to, you know, choose a flag for each thing, but there's so many different groups. And I've always said, like, right from the very, very beginning, that I think if the town wanted to make its own flag, that was like an inclusion flag, that would be the best approach. This incumbent, again, back to like, maybe we have one of like the art department at the elementary or the middle school have a project where the kids work on it and it gets voted on um, by the people of Dighton. And then we fly that. I think it's just, it's such a hot topic and it's tough. You're never going to satisfy everybody in this conversation, which is unfortunate. Um, but I, that's my personal feeling is that we should design a flag that's separate from every group and in like literally includes everybody in some way. So if we're able to purchase an all-inclusive flag, um, I know that they have them, they're not ideal for this situation. Is that something that maybe we we'll talk about again? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if okay. you if you could, um, if somebody can contact me and send me like a, a picture of that or a link to like, you know, as I, to be honest, I have no idea what it even looks like. Um, I did like try to Google search a while back um, when this topic kind of came up throughout the town, if there was something like that, but I didn't come up with anything. <clears throat> oh. Right now I'm sharing the screen. Uh, all okay. I did was just Google human rights flag. Um, and I mean, there's, there's a lot of different. Right. And this is kind of what I came up with was there's so many different yeah. things that it's like, how do you even choose between this? Because I think different things you know have different representations but i think because we're trying to we're trying to promote like you know one love you know for for dighton i think it should be exclusive to dighton i think we should come up with our own thing uh, that's obviously a conversation that your committee should have probably and introduced to whether like i said whether it be an uh, an art class or something of that nature but i think i think that's the best solution for this issue is to come up with something that is is Dighton's only instead of taking something else because if it's something that's produced by the town and then voted on and approved by the town, then you 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 know you cut through all the red tape of the issue. I know that um, when we had the conversation regarding the flag, um, one of the thoughts from Kristen, who's not on the meeting today, was doing like a rock garden or something like that, an, an inclusive rock garden. Is that something that we could possibly have at one of the parks where the kids in the school would decorate the rocks and and create what their ideal like their idea of equality is or inclusivity or anything like that that's important to them. And I know that they have it at the school, but having it separate from the school so that it's 
you know, as a community, like this is our thoughts, this is our feelings, this is where we go and celebrate each other. Yeah, so anytime a group wants to propose an idea like that, obviously it's gonna go to vote by the commission, but it's anything like that, uh, you, you know, we're more than willing to entertain and, and bring to a vote. So, you know, feel free okay. to introduce those opportunities to me. So is that is that something, Kevin, that I need to, um, yeah, I just contact you directly? Do I need to contact Leanne first? Do I need to go through Ken, who then goes through your chairs? No, you can contact me directly, and then I'll put, in, I'll put it on the agenda in a meeting, and then I'll make sure, like, if you feel like you need to speak on it, um, I'll invite you to that meeting. Or, or if, like, so um, Jen just had a meeting with the Girl Scout troop for another project where we can sit in on a meeting that pertains to that, and then give correspondence back to the commission. It, there's a bunch of, but you can con direct line of contact would be just send me an email, bring up the subject, and then we can iron out the details from there. So I have two cents, which is more than two cents. It's probably probably uh, ten dollars. Um, June is nationally recognized as Gay Pride Month. It is, and in my opinion, and my strong feeling, to leave it up to a group of people or a township to decide what, how best to represent gay pride so as, and I'm gonna, you all know I am gay. So as, so I am not viewed as too controversial. I, we were talking about being offended. Let me tell you, I have experienced offense for most of my adult life, I find this highly offensive because now we are being we are being told, well, this is going to divide the township. Let me tell you, the township is already divided. There, the, the, the township is already divided with those who are pro, I am one of them, and there are many who feel as I do, and there are many who do not, but I can only speak for myself, and I don't know how, if, if as women you would feel this, if you were a person of color you would feel this, or a Latino you would feel this. We don't want to be too controversial, so we have to um, do what we can to ameliorate or, to, or diminish uh, how you are to be represented. We're gonna make that decision for you. I think it's wrong. It should not be done. It is Gay Pride Month. It is not within that Gay Pride Month. There is inclusivity, but June has been designated specifically as Gay Pride Month. Now, if you want to have a rock dot garden, then I would say make sure that the rocks represent, each rock represents the colors of gay pride, and there should be there should be gay flags, and there should be gay stories, and there should be uh, uh, representation of same-sex parents. This is what gay pride is. To do anything else is communicating. Um, well, you will let you be. Uh, 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 we will allow you, and it's what you're saying. We are going to allow you to be represented to this point. And my experience has always been, in this country, we celebrate diversity and we celebrate and honor people being who they are. But that being said, my experience has been, be who you are, but don't be too much of who you are because you might make me feel uncomfortable. So therefore, we need, to, we need to pull in the reins here. That's my, well, I said two cents, it's gone beyond two cents. Whether my input on what I just said is going to resonate with anyone or someone's going to say, yeah, Roberto, I understand, but the moment you say but, you have negated everything I have said. So 
I am the kind of person, and I'm hoping that that is why I'm on this committee, committee, a commission to push, not to have others push and force me to retreat because I'm way beyond that. And I think that is, again, it is offensive and it is denigrating and insulting to what June is supposed to be. We are recognizing June as, as Pride Month. Autism was for April. Why do we, we would never say, well, I could be wrong. Maybe there are people say, no, we've got, we don't want to put autism too much into the, in, in the public. Could be offensive. Um, so again, I believe it is wrong because it is June, June is Pride Month. Let's call it what it is. It's nothing else but Pride Month. Thank you, Roberto. I think, Nicole, you have your hand up. Do you want to? Yeah, I identify as a, you know, a straight white woman. And I, I have to say, we keep going around about this. And I continue to be disappointed. And when when this comes up, I wonder, I wonder about this group and, and what, why I'm committing my time to it, because I don't understand the process. We were asked to weigh in, we weighed in, we were butchered and slaughtered on social media, in town news, we still weighed in. And then our weigh-in went nowhere. And if we hadn't asked, there was not gonna be any feedback that, hey, we're shelving this. I don't understand the process. I thought we voted to send it to the select board or board of selectmen, because that didn't get approved to my understanding. I, it's really disheartening and it's not my stuff like it is Roberto's. It's all of our stuff. And, and I don't understand where the transparency is around this decision-making because Ken, all due respect and you've been great. And, and I get you're in a, in a position here, right? In a leadership position that requires some diplomacy, but you're saying, as I understand it, you're the, you're the guy, <laughs> you call the shots on that. And, and I, I would, like some clarification around how, how this gets presented as, you guys recommend whether or not it should go to the, the select board and then it dies right there. And I, you know, it, it's disappointing. And not that I, for myself, need the flag at town hall, but for all of the people who need it at town hall, we're supposed to be representing and, and talking about this. And that I just, I don't understand it. And I, I'm disappointed and it's making me second guess committing hours of my time every month and, and contributing ideas and feedback and a collective openness and, and that the public scrutiny that we all undergo to be a part of this and then, and then kind of be told what you said and what you thought didn't matter. That's, it's disappointing. Thank you, Nicole. Steve, did you have your hand raised? Yeah, I something? do. All right, after Steve, uh, Kevin, you can speak up as well. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, I certainly do. Um, and I thank you, Nicole, for saying that because I feel the same way. Right now, I'm questioning what is my purpose here? Um, we worked very hard on this specific topic along with many others. We unanimously voted on this. Our input made absolutely no difference. I find it insulting. I find this divisive. And I, uh, I'm really sorry to hear this. And as Nicole just mentioned, if Ali didn't just bring this up, it would have been swept under the rug. Um, and it's, it's disheartening. You know, I find it very hypocritical as well. Here we are, you know, everybody, great discussion on Asian hate, great discussion on autism. This is fantastic. 
give them a topic that they either don't agree with, they don't like, they're against, automatically shut down. Very, very sad in my, my opinion. Can, um, can, I, can I make a comment on this? Yeah, you can, Ken, because you're one of the three people that are making decisions on this, so please do. Yes, I mentioned to this board that I would make bring the recommendation to the Board of Selectmen and when I was going to do it. I think maybe one member of this group attended that meeting. It was a, it was a Zoom meeting. Did anybody make any comments about it? Has anybody doing public input expressed an interest in flying the gay pride flag? It was my job. It was my job to present it to the Board of Selectmen because I'm the representative for this committee. And that's exactly what I did. But did anybody else offer to go before the uh, select board or the Board of Selectmen and ask them to uh, take a vote on that? No. I have yet, I don't drive all over town, but I have yet to see any of us flying a gay pride flag. I've seen Confederate flags in this town, but I have not seen one gay pride flag. They may be up there. I don't drive all over the town every day, but I don't see it. But you're asking that this divisive issue be, this flag be flown at town hall. And I can tell you that every month, the board of selectmen will be voting on somebody saying, I want to fly this flag. I want to fly that flag. Some of those flags are going to be offensive to me, right? You, I'm, I'm going to, I should be voting to fly those flags because somebody wants to fly that, that flag. Please. You don't fly flags that are offensive to you because they are contrary. They are antithetical to our mission statement. That's how you do not fly those flags. Well, suppose somebody comes before the Board of Selectmen and says, I want to fly a pro-life flag. Should we be voting yes on that? Because then that is something that the commission discusses to see if it is antithetical. I go back to, is it antithetical to our mission statement? And that is something we need to discuss. And I'm going to say this, you already have a slight, a slight, a bias in that you are not a proponent of, of flying this flag anyway. So to use the argument, well, there are other groups that want to fly their flags. I say, bienvenidos, welcome. If you're, we can, we, we can fly your flag and it meets, um, and it's in compliance with our mission statement, bienvenidos. There is room for everyone. Now, I'm saying, should the gay, gay pride flag, in my opinion, be flown in December? No, because it's not national gay pride. No. So, yeah, you know, can you, you have a slight bias. Okay, thank you, Roberto. Kevin, I know you're hearing that for a little while. After Kevin, we'll move on to Jen. I think this is a really important part of all this. And just so you're all clear, I am totally for the gay pride flag being flown at town hall. I want it. I'm all about including anybody that we can. But where the issue lies is all of our committees, because we we run into roadblocks with, say, I'll give an example, with Commission on Disability. The purpose of, of an appointed committee is to give recommendations. So whether or not the town chooses to use those recommendations is up to them. The other thing that I think really throws a hiccup into this process is, and I hate to see it thrown on Ken, like Ken doesn't want it. The town hall is town property. It's owned by the residents of Dighton. So it's gone, that's where it really throws a, a problem into it. And I agree that you guys should fight. So don't feel like you're wasting your time with what you're doing, because just like anything else, you're you're fighting and you're working for what you believe in. And it's some issues are gonna take longer to resolve than others. But when you throw in the fact that it's a town owned piece of property and we make decisions in this town by town meeting, decisions like that sometimes are gonna to go to the people and we might not always get the answers that we want, regardless of what, you know, even the, the board of selectmen proposes, unfortunately. But that, and that's the reality of it. But don't I think you're having a little getting into a little bit of a fight with each other for no reason because it comes down to really town vote 
But following up on that, Kevin and Ken, I'm not, uh, I would say this to you in person and I'll say it here, before you presented it to the select men, you stated that you were not in favor of it. That's, that's absolutely right. Uh, that was your bias, so. That's your bias. So there we go, okay. We'll right. Uh, right. I think this is a huge topic, uh, and unfortunately, we're getting toward we're getting at it towards the end of our public input. Um, Jen, I would like you to take the floor for a little bit, and then we will need to move on to number six, seven, uh, and and slowly move on from this uh, topic. Go ahead, Jen, please. I originally had raised my hand, uh, not in address of this, but when you were asking for suggestions for June. So I'll come back to that comment um, about my suggestion for June. Without, everyone knows that I've been raked over the coals for this issue as well, all throughout town, um, backwards, forwards, left and right. Um, I stand where I stand. I said what I said. I do 100% believe in the voice of the people and to bring a different issue to example so that this group can understand how we might be able to codify um, some rulings. You can, anyone can propose a warrant issue be placed on the warrant um, for the annual town meeting. So if this group wanted to write up a warrant article and have that approved, I'm not sure where we're at with the timeline right now. So don't quote me on that, but you could approach Mike Mullen and ask for that at any time. So if you wanted to put on there an article that says, um, you know, the Human Rights Commission will have the authority to um, put up a flagpole at some, such a location and fly whatever flag the Human Rights Commission decides is going to be flown for that month, that could potentially be your, your warrant article. Um, and that may be another way to go around it. And I think to Kevin's point, there are, there are lots of ways to go around it that still brings in the voice of the people. You would then need, it, need to rally behind it. You would need to educate folks about why this is important and why you believe in it and get them to show up to town meeting and vote on it. The same thing happened with changing the name of the board of selectmen to select board. That was an uh, an issue that Ken brought up. Um, it was discussed at a selectman's meeting. It was then placed on a warrant article. It was voted on at town meeting. It then had to go to the state. It was approved by the state to be put on our ballot. It was put on our ballot and then it was voted down. So now we talk about our board of selectmen because that's what our town voted on. We can be disappointed about that, but that's how democracy works. And um, I think the same thing is true about this issue and or any other issue that the Human Rights Commission might bring forward in the future. That is something that is open to not just commissions, but individuals. If you want to propose something for the town, you can propose a warrant article be placed on the town warrant for town meeting. Um, uh, thank you, Jen. clarification on that. Uh, the date is already expired for the warrants to be for the annual town meeting on June 7th. And I believe you could have at least 10 signatures to get a warrant item on the, uh, for the warrant for the annual or special town meeting. Yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend connecting with our town administrator to find out details on that. Um, and just going back to what I originally raised my hand for, which was um, to ask that the Human Rights Commission not forget that Juneteenth is a part of the month of June and that that should be recognized. Um, as part of the month of June. And there are lots of different ways that we could celebrate it. And I definitely think art and music um, are one great way that we could have a celebration locally um, and, I, and, and recognize that. And that's all I'll say. Thank you, Jen, thank you. Um, I am going to motion to um, add to our agenda next month that we have a serious conversation about where we want our community to go. Um, I feel like right now we are at a good turning point where we could either number one, go down the book club and the rock garden and finding ways to, you know, um, 
kind of bring bring the town together, or we can go down, you know, the path that it, it, it isn't that obvious. So uh, there are not two paths that we can go down. Um, but then also bring up these these tough conversations and figure it out, and you know, really rally behind things. We there's a way that we can do both. Um, but I do want to motion to continue this conversation because, like I said, unfortunately, it was brought up towards the end of the meeting, and I don't want to you know silence Roberto or Steve on their. Um, you know, their, their passion of really, you know, getting this moved forward. I do also want to say in my own personal opinion that I regret that this committee um, is so new because next year we're going to totally kick butt. You know, we're totally going to find a way to be more proactive about for the month of June. I mean, it's May and we meet one time a month. So, you know, not for nothing, we're going to meet in June. Nothing's going to happen because we're going to be talking about July or we're going to be, you know, just having a, a, a friendly conversation. So I think that, you know, I need, I'm making a motion right now to, you know, talk about what we're going to do moving forward uh, for this committee. Anyone second? Or, thank you. Uh, second to table until next. Okay. Um, the next piece on our agenda. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, you're going to take a vote, and everybody, oh. because it's Zoom. That's right. Individually take a vote. So okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. That was foolish of me. No. All right, I'm. Uh, I made the motion. Uh, Steve seconded. Um, I don't know. People can. Uh, I why guess you, people can just talk. I'll, why don't you let me just do it? Asked. Uh, Vignan, how do you vote? Good point. Voting on the motion to continue this conversation till uh, next month. You want to repeat the motion again, Ali? Yes, please, please do. Sure. Um, I'd like to um, continue this conversation about where our committee is going uh, in the future and um, how we can continue this conversation about where we're moving forward towards. I don't know. Yeah, I'm in favor. Of, uh, to, Go ahead. I'm in favor of, so that we continue the conversation. Thank Nicole you. Nicole Campbell? Yes, I'm in favor. Uh, Roberto? Yes, I am in favor. May I say something? <laughs> that would have been uh, during discussion, but never mind. I'm not the chair. I'll, so. I'll reserve it for next next meeting. Is that a yes? It is a yes. Uh, Steve. Yes. Uh, Jill. Yeah. Um, and oh. Allie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's easy for me. I'm looking at the screen. I can go across. The name. Okay. Can do you think that you'll be able to do that moving forward every time that we need to do it? I just feel like it's a little bit faster yes. and everyone just kind of talks over each other. Yeah, okay. Great. Right now it's 818. I know that we have the um, the Zoom until about 830. Uh, we can be conscious of time. We probably can go over, but I don't think that we'll need to do that. Um, Ken, I am concerned about number six on the agenda because we need to have an open interview process for the three candidates. Um, right now I see the... Um, we may only have one person on our call right now who is a candidate who submitted their application. Yeah, you can uh, interview that person. You can make a rec recommendation to the Board of Selectmen for our May 12th meeting if you approve that person or deny that person. And then you can invite the two other people that were interested uh, to come to our June meeting and they can be interviewed uh, because I think now we're down three people. So, uh, but you can, can you actually clarify that is Sean um, completely off the committee or is it was he my just understanding that he was leaving the committee and he hopes to come back when things get better. Okay, so, so right now we need to replace Sean and Bob and we always had one extra uh, vacancy yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. How many members are supposed to be on the committee 11 11. Okay, I, I'm sorry I thought it was only 10. So you can. Uh, you can interview Jen. Members can uh, ask her questions. I can't ask any questions because I'll be voting at the next meeting whether or not to approve uh, Jen as a member, if that's the recommendation of the uh, commission here. But uh, obviously, you want to ask questions related to what the Human Rights Committee is doing and make sure that they're supporting human rights. So, Sure. Not that it, we need to drag this on any longer because really, I know that it has been on our agenda and I regret not being able to, um, you know, address this sooner, but is it possible if we were to make it a little bit, you know, more 
official and invite the candidates again till to June so that we can interview them all three at the exact same time or not the sure. same time, but yeah, no, I get it. If that's what you want to do, sure, you can do that. Jen, so you, I appreciate you, you coming I on. Sorry, yeah. Ali, I just wanted to say too, you know, next next month we have a lot already on our agenda as well because we have Gay Pride, we have Juneteenth. So I just don't want to, I don't, I don't want that meeting to push it again. I know, I know. So, you know what, I, I, don't, I feel that if we could, um, if there are three openings and we have a candidate right now who stayed on this call the whole time, Let's ask a few questions and make a decision on one. That's what I recommend. I agree, Steve. Thank you. All right, let's do it. Jenny, you ready? Sure. All right, thank you. Um, we did receive your application um, in your resume. Uh, I just received that tonight, actually, thanks to you. Um, so I, I appreciate you passing that along. Uh, tonight, we're going to ask you a few questions. Um, who on this committee wants to start first? Or you know what, why don't we, uh, Jen, can you take maybe two minutes, no more than two minutes and just um, tell us why you wanna be a part of this committee. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll jump in on questions. Do you wanna start? Two minutes. Sure, my name is Jen Dichkowski. Um, I've been a resident of Dayton for the last 10 years. Um, I am a parent in town. I have two children in the school system. My husband is an employee of the school district. And um, let's see, I've spent probably about 18 years of my professional career working in social justice um, positions professionally, um, particularly in the nonprofit arena around um, diversity, equity, and inclusion programming um, for girls and young women. Um, <clears throat> I am currently serving in my place of business on our diversity, equity, and inclusion um, steering committee. I have, um, I, that's, I guess that's my two minute. <laughs> Whatever questions you have for me, I can, I could probably answer. <clears throat> All right, that's great. Uh, thank you, that's perfect. Steve, do you wanna start? I see that you're unmuted. Oh, well. <laughs> Um, Jen kind of just answered my <laughs> first question. Basically, you know, tell me about some of the experiences you've had in the advancement of uh, human rights and equality. Do you have any other examples? You just gave some examples of committees, uh, but any other organizations that you've been involved with where you have actually uh, seen an impact and have made a difference? Um, so, I mean, when I worked for Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts, I did a lot of um, grant writing, Department of Justice um, grants. Um, we had uh, state uh, funded grants for programming to bring programming into uh, places where girls were not accessing Girl Scouts. Previously, um, I did a lot of work in the cities of New Bedford, Brockton, um, Lawrence, um, Roxbury, um, Mattapan, um, where else did we have programs? Uh, Framingham, um, all over the place really. So um, these were um, girls who had never either due to income or transportation or other barriers to participation, um, participated in Girl Scouts previously. So we were able to get in um, programs that were run at no cost to the girls or their families. Um, and be able to have them be part of Girl Scouts. We were able to bring them out to Girl Scout camp. Um, I had, I remember bringing a group of girls from the city of Brockton um, down to Plymouth and um, we have an indoor rock wall at the camp down there. And um, these girls all got there and there's no way I'm gonna climb that wall. And by the end of the night, they all rang the bell. Um, and it was a huge uh, confidence builder, I think for all of them. Um, just to have that opportunity to do that with each other, to cheer each other on. Um, it was really great community building. Um, so I've had opportunities like that professionally. Um, personally, I've done a lot of advocating um, for disability rights. Um, my son has autism um, and has been involved with services since he was two years old um, and he was not speaking. Um, so I've had to do a lot of self-education and um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of learning there and I, I, I think I'm lucky because I'm an educated adult. Um, there's a lot of 
disadvantage for folks that don't have um, access to information about what is available for services for children with disabilities. Um, and so I've done a lot of individual talking with families. Um, anybody who comes to me and asks for help or advice, I'm happy to sit down and help look up laws um, and, and you know, try to help them find advocates or, or whatever resources they wow. might need. Excellent, thank you. I think that was a, a really good answer. Um, Steve, do you have a, another question or perhaps a follow-up question? No, no. I, I want to. I know we only have four minutes left, and um, I, I just wanted to hear uh, Jen's perspective on you know some of her background and what what she has accomplished in right. the area of human rights. So, thank, thank you, you, and feel free anyone else. Um, Jen, uh, Jill, I see that you're unmuted. Do you have a question, Jill? So we had some questions. Um, so this is not my question, but somebody else in um, the commission had asked if you consider human rights to be a uh, politically driven committee. Like what are your thoughts between human rights and um, the politics within the community? Sure. Um, I don't believe that the Human Rights Commission is a politically driven commission with a political agenda. I think that um, human rights are basic rights um, for all human beings. Um, it's one of the things I'm, I'm most passionate about. However, I do believe in democracy and our town is run through a democratic system. So there are times um, you know, when we won't be able to make a decision, but we could make a statement. Um, and I think you've done that in the past, um, really uh, making an effort around education, um, you know, a resource, um, again, breaking down barriers to participation. These are all really important things that have nothing to do with politics. Um, and then two, I had two questions. So I wanted to know if you had any thoughts or ideas on uniting the community, um, considering that, you know, just during this conversation, we've had a lot of um, talks about the community dividing. So do you have any thoughts about how we can reunite? Yeah, um, for the last year, I've been participating with um, the YWCA and the NAACP in New Bedford and a book club that they've had. Um, and it's it's mostly been like, um, five weeks long or so, um, each book that we do. So um, we'll read the book uh, and it's broken down by chapters and it's facilitated. Um, and it has been an amazing opportunity. There are people from all over Southeastern Massachusetts participating in that group. And it's been done you know, via Zoom because of COVID. Um, so it's been great to, and actually there've been a, a few of the books. We had folks from out of state participating as well. Um, I'm not sure how they got connected with the group, but it was really nice to meet lots of different folks. It was a great way to have a facilitated conversation where we read something and then we're discussing that issue. So we're talking about issues, not people. Um, and that's, I think, a way to really um, make that brave space that I was referring to earlier and make it a place where we can help. Um, because I really think the true understanding comes from the personal stories when we get to know each other. Um, and, and we have to make an effort to do that. I think someone said earlier, you know, small town, we're not, you know, hugely diverse. And so it is our responsibility to do that. And I think that the, um, Human Rights Committee could have a huge impact on that. I, you know, art, music, um, reading, these are all really important things that at no, almost no cost with no budget, we could be able to, you know, hey, let's listen to this song together. And now let's talk about the lyrics. You know, let's talk about the life of the person who wrote it. Um, and it's a, it's a, I think a uniting and um, a universal um, way to communicate with folks. You know, we really can connect with one another around art and music. Wow. And then my uh, second question was, I know that you spoke about like your experience and, and all of that, but do you have a personal for joining? Do I vote? I'm sorry. A personal goal for joining the committee? I think my personal goal for joining the committee is uh, my same goal for most things. Um, I have spent a lot of time um, thinking about my personal values and 
anything that I'm going to invest time in uh, needs to align with those values. And one of my values is, is service and authenticity. Um, and I am an authentic person. I live my life out loud. I think, um, you know, anybody can ask me anything and I will tell them and I'll have an honest conversation with them. Um, and I really do enjoy um, volunteering and serving, um, especially around causes that are important to me. And I care so deeply about people. Um, I, I really, I, I, I think I'm at a, at a very fundamental level bothered by hate of all kinds. And I know that that sounds very, um, you know, I don't know, <laughs> fluffy or, or whatever, but when we really take the time to get to know each other and we start to think about how can we support each other better, um, that's where we can connect. And it's not, it's not about me over you, I'm going to get more than you or somebody else deserves it more than someone. It's how can we all get better? How can we all um, get what we need, right? I talk a lot about that with my kids that, that uh, fairness is not treating everybody the same, right? It's giving everybody what they need in order to succeed. And I think that that's a lot of um, my goal with this is, is I don't think that as a society, as a whole, as a country, um, we are giving everybody what they need in order to succeed. And I think, um, you know, I've always sort of worked on the think globally, act locally kind of tenant. I can't change the world, but I can change my town, I can have an impact on my community um, and, and make it a better place for my kids and, and your kids. And, and, you know, as they're growing up, um, being able to feel like this is a place that they can call home for a long term. Thank you, Jen. I think that's good. I mean, that's a lot that what you just said. Thank you. And I think you asked really good questions, Jill and Steve. Are there any other um, questions for um, committee members? Vinya, Nicole, Roberto, anything that you want to mention before we um, wrap up the interview? No, my two questions, um, Jen answered. So. Perfect. Uh, all, all of my stuff was addressed. Thank you. Excellent. Binion, you're all set? All set, too. Thank you. All right, great. So I think that means, um, uh, what does that mean, Ken? Yes, someone should make a, a motion whether to recommend that she be appointed to this committee or not recommend. And they got to obviously second and then we'll take a vote. I recommend that Jen be uh, accepted into the commission. I second that. Is there any further discussion? If not, uh, Vignan, how do you vote? I'm in favor. What was that, please? I am in favor. Okay. Roberto? Yes, in favor. Uh, Nicole uh, Campbell? She seconded, so I think that means yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to unmute. Yeah, I seconded it. Yes. And Second Steve? Help. Steve? Would you unmute yourself, Steve? I guess it would help if I wasn't. <laughs> yes, I, I do. I, I think Jen would be a good addition. Jill? Yes, I do. And uh, Allie? Yes, thank you. So it passes unanimously. So you need to uh, notify Leanne uh, that the Commission on uh, Human Rights Commission has voted to uh, recommend that Jen be appointed to the uh, commission. Uh, I'm, that's my job, right? Or is that Jen's job to tell Leanne? No. It's, it's actually your job. You're still okay. a secretary, even though you're acting chairman. <laughs> you're yeah, chairman. okay. No, I just, yeah. I don't, I was trying to write something down and I didn't know if you were saying, all right, Jen, now you go or no, if I go. No. Okay, excellent. I will follow up with Leanne. And that should be on a May 12th uh, agenda. Uh, May 12th agenda. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, two more things left on for the agenda. Um, we are, it was on the agenda to um, elect a vice chair, and then also on the agenda was to pick a date for the next meeting. Um, thank you, Jen. Uh, I appreciate your um, contributions tonight. Electing a vice chair. What do we think about that? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you want to kick this over to the next meeting only because we don't have a chair also. Uh, so you may want to uh, kick it over to the June meeting. I know it's going to be a long meeting, uh, but to elect a chair and a vice chair, unless somebody right now is interested in being the vice chair. I said that I would do it um, if, if nobody else, like if nobody else was interested, I just don't have the time to commit to being chair. So if I say that I'll do vice, I just want to make sure that like, because we don't have an actual chair that it's not going to fall onto me. Yes. Yeah, so, right, so you want me to hold on <laughs> to this until next meeting, Jill? I don't know, Ken, what are your thoughts? If you're uh, elected as vice chair today, you'll be running the next meeting. Yeah, I, I, that doesn't bother me. Um, I just, I don't know if anybody else is interested in, in taking it. I don't wanna like pull it from somebody that's, you know, maybe more qualified or, or something like that, so. You're very qualified, Jill. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You bring a lot to Sometimes the table. Sometimes I don't feel it. <laughs> You bring a lot to the table. So I make a motion to not, or I guess I'm nominating Jill Haru as the vice chair of the Dayton Human Rights Committee Commission. Is there a second? Second. Steve, second. Roberto, thank you. So okay. we're, Ali, go ahead. Yeah, any further discussion? If not, how do you vote on this, Vignan? I'm in favor. Uh, Roberto? Yes. And Nicole Campbell? Roberto. Yes, in favor. Yeah. Steve? Yes. Uh, Jill? Sure. Yes. Do and it. Allie? So congratulations, uh, Jill. So the next uh, meeting, if we go by our schedule, the first Tuesday of the month is June 1st. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. So far, yes. Yep. Um, and we're keeping it on Zoom. Is that correct? Well, we Groups are starting to meet at uh, town hall. Right now, it can only be 13 people. Uh, it would probably be a hybrid meeting. I'm not sure if anybody's capable of, of doing a uh, Zoom meeting at town hall. Plus, I don't know if, it, I think Cable said they can't, they can't tape our meeting because they have so many meetings to uh, tape. So I, I don't think uh, Cable will be doing it. All right, let's, uh, maybe we'll just keep it on Zoom for the time being. I feel like it's working out well so far. Um, yeah. All right, so all those in favor of, oh, we don't even have to vote on it because we always do it, it's right? Yes, yeah, the first Tuesday of the month. So it's June for us and it's at 6.30. Okay, maybe even next meeting I'll suggest, um, I don't know, this is a lot for one night and uh, I don't know, maybe moving forward, we can talk about maybe doing two meetings a month or something just to kind of see where we're going, I don't know. I just, I'm not feeling like we're getting anything accomplished. We're having really good discussion, but again, this is a committee to, to do some, you know, to, to make some moves. And I don't feel like maybe we're doing that yet. It'll be easier once you get a budget. You'll know what you can, you can spend yeah. money on. So. I guess that's true. Can I ask a question? Um, Ken, you're probably the only one that can answer this. If I were able to get, um, a donation, right, from my employer. Um, is that possible? Is that acceptable? We're going to be very careful with that. If you want, uh, are, we, are we talking about a, uh, a financial donation or items? Yes. Okay. Basically, I can get credit for um, volunteering my time, and we get. Um, you know, if after so many hours, I could, um, if if I, I choose, I can have them um, uh, give an award type thing to the organization organization that I'm in. Is that something that could work, or is that a definite no? I mean, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to help, you know, help the commission out. If that's something that's possible, great. If it isn't, if it's frowned upon, that's great also. I'll take the money myself. <laughs> yeah, I will run it by a, a town administrator, Mike Mullen, okay? I just wanna be careful. We got it when it comes to money and stuff like that, we got it. As my boss used to say, that's what's gonna put us in jail. So 
It's yeah. fine. So no. let me run it by Mike Mullen and hopefully I'll have an answer uh, for our next meeting. Okay, so that's fair. Is that too late or? No, I'll, I can hold off. Okay. I can hold off on that. Okay. Do you mind if I chime in a little? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I think that they would have to set up a revolving account. So I would check with the town account and you would be able to accept donations if you had a revolving account. Yeah, so this would be a one-time a, a one -time donation. Right, you would just have to set up that revolving account, but Ken can check for you. Yeah, and if so, uh, what would the name of it be? You know what I mean? Would it be that in commission on human rights? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I'd have to know the exact name as well. Yeah, let, let me run it by Mike Mullen, our town administrator. Yeah. And also our town uh, accountant. Obviously, we want to make sure it doesn't go into the general fund. We want it to go into the commission. So uh, let me check on that. And if I get an answer sooner than the next meeting, Steve, I will let you know. Otherwise, okay. uh, we can further discuss it at, uh, in June. Ken, it's just like every week at the Board of Selectmen's meeting when people are making donations to the Council on Aging. Those were accepted also. Prime time, yes. All right. All right, excellent. I think we got a lot accomplished. We went a little bit over schedule, but um, you know, we were off to a slow start, got pretty uh, moving towards the end. And next thing you know, we have a new vice chair. We have a new uh, person on here um, uh, on our committee. So uh, I think we ended strong. So I'm going to um, send this over to Leanne to make sure that it gets posted on YouTube. Um, and it looks like Jen chimed in on the chat that she's going to attend the uh, May 12th Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, it's 8.42 p.m. and I do motion to adjourn, adjourn, adjourn this meeting. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor, uh, say aye. Vignan? Aye. Nicole? In favor. Roberto? Aye. Jill? Aye. Steve? Yes. And Allie? Yes. It's been approved. Good night. We'll see everybody on June 1st. Excellent. Hi, no, we'll you. see everyone on May 12th. We'll all participate in the next town meeting there, Hi. show our faces and our support. It's the Board of Selectmen, yes, at the next Board of Selectmen meeting on uh, May 12th. Right. It's fine. Yep. Very good. Thank all you. right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye bye.